Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. Welcome to the add email and track links. In this unique training, we're going to be solving four distinct problems. How do you search and add multiple attachments into an email? How do we automatically create a short link from any link in Excel? How do we create a short link from a file on our computer? And finally, how do we track links and know how many times they were clicked? You're gonna learn all that and a lot more in this week's training. I can't wait, let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really great training for you. This training is all about tracking links. Links are super important. When we're sending out emails, we want to supply links. We want to give the user the ability to click links that we supply. We also want to upload large applications, but we can't do that in email. If it gets beyond 10, 15, or 20 megabytes, it's too large to be emailed. So what's the solution? How do we send large files? I'm going to answer that in this training, and we're going to show you not only how to create that in the link automatically with just a few lines of code. We're also going to teach you how to know when that link has been clicked and how many times the link has been clicked. Also, we're going to show you some really amazing training on how to pull that data extract from all the links you have and automatically update the table. We've got a link data that's going to show all of our links and all of our short links, our long links, our short links, our link ID, and the number of times it's been clicked. We've got some customer lists and we're going to wrap that all up into a really cool email. This particular training, this, this screen itself is pretty basic. There's not too much going on with this screen, so I built it already for you. You don't have to watch me format. There's not too much going on. In fact, there's nothing in columns A and B. Nothing is hidden. Everything is uh, here visible, so it's a pretty simple training, and it's pretty simple, but the concepts that you're going to learn and the third-party tools that you're going to learn are going to blow your mind because they've never been this easy to incorporate, and it's really important. We're solving some really fantastic problems here that we've had in the past. How do we use multiple attachments if we're going to browse for multiple attachments? How do we add those attachments into an email uh, as an attached file? And what if they're large? How do we add that attachment as a link so a customer can download it automatically? I'm going to show you how to do that. And of course, how to get the data. It's going to be a great training. The best way to get these trainings is to subscribe to our channel. I create these free, absolutely free, and always going to have a, an available workbook for you absolutely for free. All you got to do is click the links down in the description. Best way to know about these trainings is to subscribe. If you can click that link down below to subscribe and the notification icon bell, I'm going to make sure that you get alerted each and every training there every single Tuesday without fail. I make sure I get those for you. And if you do like these trainings and you love to learn Excel, my goal is to teach you not just Excel, but how to be successful with Excel. I want to get you passive income and help you reach your own personal dreams with Excel as a tool to do that. Just as I've been doing with my own applications, selling them on the market for many years. Now I want to do that for you. And that's just what I'm doing inside the mentorship program. If your skills are up to par and you want to join us in the Excel for Freelancers mentorship program, I'm going to show you exactly how to define your own applications, how to design them, how to develop them, and finally how to deploy them on an internet so you can get passive income from your application. And I'm going to do that all while building an incredible accounting application that's yours to keep, of course, during the program. That accounting program is going to be complete with inventory, invoicing, purchasing, a full dashboard, complete sharing and sync, an email and automation, and full user security. So it's going to be great, great application. Mentorship program, myexcelmentor.com if you want to get in. I'll have it open for a while, so go ahead and click the link below. All right, let's get to this training. I've got a ton to show you, and we're going to walk you step by step through every single macro, through every single feature. It's going to be a great training. We're going to use a third-party tool called Integromat. It's something that we've used in the past. If you've seen my videos, if not, no problem. I'm going to walk you step by step. And also, it's going to include Dropbox. Dropbox is an amazing application, free at least up to two gigabytes, and it's going to allow you to upload your files to the internet automatically based on this folder and of course you have complete version history so every time you save a file it's going to be located there let's get to the training so basically what I want to do is I want to be able to send an email so when we click send an email it's going to send an automatically multiple attachments if you have multiple attachments of course it's going to be based on this so not only do we send an email but we may want to send it to our to new customers to all types of customers 
I've got a customer list right here. It's basic names, address, and we're just going to use the email here and the phone number if we need to or not, we can add that in. Customer type, what I've done is I've created a unique list. I want to know all the different customer types and that way I can have a drop down list. And I also want that list to include all types. Notice that we have in this, we have a data validation. Let's take a look at the data validation that I've created here. Inside the data validation, data validation, it's going to be called customer type. It's a relatively simple data validation, and it's based on this list here. So let's take a look inside that and see just how we created that. The first thing, if you want to get a unique list, obviously you can. If you've got a large list, the best way to do it is through an advanced filter. So if I just want an advanced filter, I can do data, right? All I need to do is select the data here, including the headers and all the data. Go in data to get your new list. Advanced, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want to select the list range. In this case, of course, it's going to be customer type. So I'm going to select that. And then I don't want any criteria. In other words, I only want a unique list. So if there's no criteria, I'm just going to cl clear this. And then I want to copy this to a new location. I want a unique list in a unique location. And the best way to do that is just to select that. So if we scroll over here, let me scroll over here and go into the unique. We don't need that. Inside this, all I need to do is select customer types. That is where I want that destination to come on, that copy to right there. And I want unique records only, so I'm going to click OK. What that's going to do is going to bring it. So if I let me delete that so you can see how it is. Then I'm going to do that one more time so you can see that. Otherwise, it's too fast for it. I'm going to copy to another location. And that location is going to be N2. And I want unique records only. I'm going to click OK. It's going to populate that list. That's perfect. I got my unique list. But what I really want is I want that unique list to include all types so on this I simply put all types here now what I want to do is just simple link so equals n3 and equals n4 so all I do is just link and then drag it down well, that's great but now how do I get that now we notice that each one of these are links right so what I want is a dynamic named range based on only the existing files if the value is zero or nothing I don't want to include it so if we go into the formulas back into our name range the only uh, named range we have the others are criteria and extract those are both created automatically uh, when we run an advanced filter so we're gonna tab over here and we're gonna see that that data only includes the actual data not the links how do we do that especially when we have formulas in there well again we can use count if um, in this case I'm gonna use an offset so our starting point is gonna be in this case let me zoom into that so you can see it uh, our starting point is O2 so that's gonna be the first one where we've placed all types Next, we're going to do comma. We don't want to go any rows down over or any columns over. In this case, what we want to do is the number of rows. What is the number of rows? In this case, we want to know the number of rows. We're going to use count if. In this one, I only want to know those that do not include zero. So we're going to count the entire. You could go down as far with your range as you want. Of course, you could go 50. So basically, we're going to count every single cell in that range that does not equal zero. So this does not equal within quotes and the zero that's going to get us and we only want a single column to return so in this case a single column that is our offset formula so when we use the tab key go tab out and we use the shift tab to tab back in we do that it's going to highlight that formula and then you're going to see the dancing ants around that so all we need to do is if we were to add one more here it would automatically populate here this is now the list that i want to use inside my emails and now, speaking of that advanced filter, we're going to run that advanced filter and run the macro and run the email macro. So why don't we just go over it? So now I've got some criteria. This is a fixed criteria. Fixed meaning the VBA doesn't run this criteria. This criteria is based on a formula. If we set all types, basically inside this criteria, I want it to show up blank. But if they've selected something other than all types, in that case, so let's say existing, I want it to show that value. So existing. So how do we do that? That's just a simple formula. If in the email screen, E4, it's equal to all types, then show nothing. Otherwise, show what's in E4 relatively. And of course, I only want to send it to those customers who have opted into emails. If they know, if they do not want email sent, of course, that's going to be just a different filter. They're all yes, few no's here. So basically, I want to give that. These are the criteria. So when I run my advanced filter, I want to know who to send that email to. So it's going to be all those customers. So for example, if my customer type was new, when I ran this, if we click emails and we click only new, we only have a single customer that is new. We go ahead and click send email. It's going to run that macro. and We're going to go through step by step on that macro. It's going to attach those files. And if we see here in our customers, we see that we have a new 
and we see that single customer new that single customer and that customer of course has to be opted in so it's going to be only new customers that have opted in, in this case it's just one okay great but if to take a look at this i also want to show you how to add files attached not just a single files we've done in the past but what about multiple files what if i want multiple files so let's say i want to send uh, this file and this file and this file. I'm going to hold down the control. We've got a multi select. I'm going to walk you through that code and I'm going to click OK. What that's going to do is going to add all of those in right here. So if we drop this down, you see that now all of those files have been added here. Let me show you that again. I'm going to clear all this out and we're going to show you once again. OK, so now the cell's cleared. Now, if I want to add files, I'm going to click on attach. I'm going to hold down the control here and then I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see those three files have been added in and they've been separated by they have a separator on them there's a comma right here that's separating each of the files that's going to become important then when we click send email those individual attachments are all going to be sent separate so we're going to walk through that macro and show you just how we did that now let's take a look at a few things we also have the ability to create a short link and so let's say i've, I've already copied a paste i want to create a short link i want to add that short link in the email i don't want to send the, the customer an entire link i want to know if he's correct so we're going to show you how to enter all this going to first you can enter a long link. and i've copied my excel for freelancers fan page here on facebook and click ok and what that's going to do is automatically going to create a short link it's going to send it and here we have our short link right here here's a short link here is the main link right here and we also have that added to here notice it's been added here i've got a long link i've got a short link and i've got a link id and we're going to also know if it's been clicked well it's great that's how we create a short link from a, just any link but what if i want to send a large file what let's say i want to send one over 100 megabytes how do i do that i can't do that in email i'm going to show you exactly how to do that let's click add a file and pick a large file I've got one here, 167 megabytes, way too big to be able to send over an email. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Click OK. It's going to generate a short link, and we're going to be able to copy that short link right inside the email. There it is. There's our email. Now all we need to do is copy this and paste this right inside our email, and we can email it to the customer. It couldn't be any simpler than that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in inside this training that's great okay but what about that now we have our emails but what i want to know if they, they actually clicked them how do we do that all we got to do is click get link data and it's going to get our data from us and it's going to tell us how many how much data we got and how many links we have and just like that eight links were imported four links have been updated just like that now when we go over to link data we see anything that's been clicked so notice that nothing has been clicked but all we need to do if i if, if somebody clicks on this let's go ahead and click on this we're going to click on that it's going to bring us up to this video here that we have this large file it's going to start downloading it but i'm going to cancel that we don't need to but so that's how they have to do now if we go ahead and look in i'll show you that screen in just a moment i got a lot to show you on that can't wait and now if we go ahead and click that we notice we just click we're going to get get link data one more time and now we see that eight links and four links have been updated we take a look inside our link data and we see that it's now been clicked once because we just clicked on it I'm going to show you that we're going to get into that right now because i cannot wait there's so much to cover in this so many really cool features that you can start using today and to generate this and of course we have another one that's going to clear our email we're going to go over that as well so we got a few macros so let's get into those macros and see just how we did that inside the developers to get into the vba you'll have the visual basic here if for some reason you don't have the developers tab available you can just find that depending upon your version of excel wherever it is found inside the options you will find it and look for customized ribbon regardless of the version and select the developers option here that's going to display it you'll also have a shortcut if you want alt f11 will get you inside the developers and we've got two modules here just two modules we've got email macro it's going to we got sub clear i'm going to be creating that didn't create that yet and we have that's pretty easy and we have send email so i'm going to do that send email and then of course we have link macros we have some add file attachments it's a little bit quicker these videos tend to be a lot longer so i'm going to i wrote this i'm going to walk you step by step because not only do i want to show you how to create these macros i want to show you how to work with integromat that third party tool to help create this automation so let's go over the simple one first and that's called the add file attachments that is the same macro that 
that we use when we add a file attachment. I think I should clear this before we do that. So I want to add some code in there. So make sure to clear out E6. So let's just delete that right now. Add file. So all we need to do is add multiple files. Since holding down the click, we're not, we don't want that 167. And then clicking OK. And what that's going to do is add those files in there. So it's going to add all the selected files in there just like that. So that's going to be in E6. So let's go ahead and do that right now inside the VBA, the first thing we want to do is with attach file, let's go ahead and clear that out. I want to make sure sheet one dot range E6 is going to be cleared. We want to clear the contents so that way you don't necessarily need to you keep it up and it'll, it'll continue to add to whatever's there. So if you want to keep adding and adding, but we're just going to clear it for now dot clear it makes it a little easier for the training dot clear contents. Okay, so we've cleared the contents of E6 on base on, and now what we're going to do is we're going to set the attach file. We've got some file, fi attach file as file dialog. We're going to use that. We need to know that one. We also want the file attachment. That's going to be a string. And of course, the attach file as application file dialog. We want a file picker. We're going to pick individual files. If we want to browse for a folder, sometimes we're going to use folder picker, so keep that in mind. Then, of course, with this file dialog, I want to set a title, select, select file to attach. I'm going to change that. Just select files because it could be multiple, so files to attach. Okay, so now multi-select. We're going to make this true. Normally, it's been false, but I want to give the user the ability to select multiple files, so multi-select is true. And then if show negative one, if it does not equal negative one, means they have found something. They've selected at least one item. If that is correct, dot show will be negative one. But if for some reason it is not negative one, then they have not made a selection. So in that case, we want to skip all this and go to no selection. Assuming that they have selected one or more files, what I want to do is I want to loop through the files in those selected items. So the best way to do that is use a for each next loop. So the best way is for each attach file. We define that as a string in the selected item. So for each one of those, what are we going to do? I'm going to take whatever's in E6 and I'm going to add to that. I'm going to add whatever's existing already. I'm going to add the file attachment, which is going to be the full file path, and I'm going to add a comma onto that. So once I do that, it's going to add every single full file path, and then it's going to be separated by a comma. Once we are done with that, then I want to just remove the last column because it's a, the last one is going to also have a comma a comma on the last item. I don't want that comma, so I want to remove that comma. The best way to do that is take whatever's in E6, and on the left, we need to determine the entire string here, the left portion. I want the left portion. And the length, in this case, the length of whatever's in E6, the length minus one. So I only want to keep the left portion. I want to keep everything but the last character. So that's going to do it. Using the left is going to allow us to keep everything in there other than the last then the length of the last plus the last character. That last character is going to be that comma. I want to remove that. That's it. That's all I have to do to take those attachments inside. And of course, when we email that, actually email those, I'm going to show you how we loop through those and, and start adding those attachments based on that. That comma is going to help us out as our separator. Okay, great. But how do I add a file as a link? I want to add a file as a link. Actually, let's do this one first. I want to create a short link. We'll do add a file second. Create a short link. That is the macro that we did here. Create a short link. This is the same one where we pasted it in and then added that short link automatically inside here. So how do we do that? Well, again, we're going to use Intergrammat. Intergrammat is a third party tool. It's just like Zapier, but I find it a lot better, a lot easier to use and a lot more better UI. So let's go into that and see just what Intergrammat is. Here is Intergrammat. It is this application. I'm going to include the links down below so you can sign up. It's absolutely free up to like 1000 different automations. So it's, it's a great tool and you're allowed to have two on at the same time. So two. So if I try to create a second one, it's going to let me know that I've exceeded the maximum. So keep that in mind that two, I'm going to create three different ones for you for today and you can use and them interchangeably. You probably won't use them all at the same time, but we're going to create three different automations, three different automations. We're going to be creating a short link. We're going to be creating a shareable short link and we're going to be creating link data. And we're going to use a few different third party tools. We're going to be using Dropbox. If you don't have Dropbox, a great free tool. So I'd like to get you on that. And we're going to be using another link shortener. I've used Bitly in the past, but I found something really, really cool. We're going to be using something called, as you can see here, there's an automation called 
rebrandly it's a really cool tool i like it as a link shortener a lot of possibilities it's free and let's just take a quick look at rebrandly is a great tool it's basically just a link shortener tool but it's got a fantastic api with a lot of flexibility again it's free and all you need to do is just create links. We're gonna use it through through its API. We're not gonna be going on here, but basically this is all where our links are tracked, the links that we just made. Notice the Excel for freelancers that we built. Notice it lets us know that there's one click and that's the one we just made. So it's really great. So here it is. So everything we're gonna create is gonna end up on rebranding. We're gonna use this tool inside Intricromat. So Intricromat. So how do we create? What's a scenario? Let's take a look at a scenario. A scenario is some type of an automation that you want. So for example, if I create a new scenario here and I want to do something, right? what do I want to do? Now when it comes to Excel, the best thing, what I used to do a lot is just create a webhook because Excel can do lots of things on an automation. So there, there needs to be that instigator that causes things to happen. And we use a webhook to do that. And basically inside a webhook, it looks something like this. So you'll have a URL like this, looking like this, and you'll have some information some that you want to send, Some, not always, but some information that in this case we want to send a long link and we want to get back something. So basically we're sending something and we're getting back something. In this case we're getting a response back. The response is basically the short link. So we're sending the long link and we're gonna get the response. So how do we do that? Well, in Intricomat, it's really simple. The first thing we wanna do is create a webhook. So and to do that, we need to search webhook, right? So webhook, and we find one called webhook, not necessarily WP webhooks. This is the one webhook we want. We wanna use that one. We also wanna use, of course, rebrandly. We wanna use rebrandly. So and you can add as many webhooks as you want. So let's say we're gonna add a webhook. Let's click here and we're gonna create a custom webhook. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us, uh, we give it a name. So let's use a name. We're going to call this just test because I've already created enough. And we'll walk through what I've created. So in here it's called test. So I'll just create a test. You can give it any name you want as long as it's not the same as the other ones. And click save. What that's going to do is generate this webhook. And you're going to take this webhook and you're going to copy it to the clipboard. Then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it inside your VBA code and you're gonna paste it inside your code. We're gonna go over this longly. So basically inside this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a longly, I'm gonna create an input box. Remember that input box that you saw when I clicked at that? That's this input box. All I want to do is just say, please enter. It's not very pretty, but it's very basic. It's fine for training purposes. And all the user is gonna do is enter that long link right here that way we can place it into a variable so once the users enter that link we're going to place it into that variable that variable is going to be called long link that's a string variable and of course if it's empty we're going to exit the sub because when i canceled it it was empty so we just want to make sure it's empty next up we're going to set the ottp create object we want to create an http object this is going to allow us to send information over the internet then I want to use a webhook. This is where you paste in that code. I'm not going to paste it in because I've already got it all set up. So this is where all you need to do if you're doing this yourself is go in here again, inside here, you want to copy this to the clipboard, copy this webhook and place it right in here. Just paste it up to the question mark. Make sure you have that question mark. Next up is where you want the information to send. This name here, file to share, can be anything you want, anything you want. We can change it to whatever, it doesn't matter, as long as you recognize what it is. This is our variable, but make sure that we have the name, then it's equals, right? Make sure this is part of the quote, then our variable is and, we want to attach that variable in the long link. So this is what we're gonna send. We're gonna send out this information and this. Once it gets sent, we're gonna send the OTP patch. It's gonna be URL. That's just some information for the OTP. Then I wanna set the content type as an application JSON. That's in the headers. Then basically we're gonna send the information. When we send it, we're gonna get back a response. So let's take a look at that. As soon as I'm gonna make sure this one is on, now I've created it. So what's our next step? So once we've created it, I'm gonna go back into our next step. Now I'm gonna add another module. In this case, what do I want? I want to get something else. In this case, I wanna create a short link. So I've created a rebrandly account. So rebrandly, I'm gonna type in because I wanna create that short link, right? So click rebrandly. Now, notice it pops up right for me, but for you, it's gonna ask for authorization. In this case, what we wanna do is we wanna create a link. So we're gonna click create link. 
And then what we want to do is we're going to get some options here. The first thing we're going to see is main workspace. If you have several workspace, you can check which workspace you want. We want a destination. We want a destination. Now, what is that destination? We only have one option, file to share. And if you remember correctly, inside our object, the link that we sent, this webhook that we sent, it only contains one item. If we send more, it'll contain more. We only have one, file to share, and that is the long link. That is the long link that we want to put in here. That is our destination. So we're going to put that in here. Just click it once or drag and drop either way. That's going to bring in now file to share. Now the rest of these options just optional. We have domain ID if we have a specific domain name, ID or slash tag. That's pretty much it. All we want to do is pretty much get this long link and put it in. Click OK. All right. So we've, we've sent the information. Rebrandly is going to take care of the business and bring it into a short link. Now I need to basically extract that short link, but I need to do just more than that. What I need to do is when I bring it inside, I need to, I want to, I want more information than other than just the link. I want the link ID because that's going to help us get the data. So every link, we have a long link, we have a short link, we have a link ID, and then I want to get the number of clicks. So I need both the short link and the link ID. And inside our code, what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be parsing it. So we want the response to be both of those. We want the first thing is the short link and the second is the link ID. I want both of those inside the response. That's the response that we're going to get back. So let's create a response. We're going to click add another module click webhooks and the only thing that's left is the webhook response because we've sent webhook now we're ready to what do we want inside the response status is fine as 200 what do we want in the body we've got a lot of options but i really just need two things the first thing what i want is that short link called short url so we're going to click that and then what I want to do is I also want to put in the bridge, the short link ID. That's a unique ID just for that link, but I want to separate that. So I'm going to put a dash in there. And why am I doing that? Because inside our code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dash as our separator and figure out the difference between the short link and the link ID. I want to separate those, basically parse those from text so we can do that inside that. So all we need to do is just create that. And then next up, I'm going to place that link ID. So we have the short URL. URL and the branded link ID. That's it. That's all I need to. If we see, if we have some advanced settings, we can add custom headers and things like that, but we don't need that for now. All we need is that. That's it. So that's what's going to be in our response. So we're going to click. It's basically on. We're going to save our changes, but although there are no save changes. And so that's all we need to do. We're going to double check that our link here, remember our link is going to ending in, and this link it ends in 5LW. So we want to make sure we've got the right link that's situated. Same thing here, 5LW. It's the same link. Great. So we're ready to go. Now all we need to do is click the button that's been assigned to the macro, and that is our create short link. I'll just pull up a link. Right now, we can pull up any link. I'll just get this link here because that's fine. Any link is fine. And then we're going to go back into the application itself. We're going to click Create Short Link. And what that's going to do, pasting that in, clicking OK, it's going to get both of those information. And now what we do is we've created a message box that's going to show that. Just we added it. We've got the short link. We have the dash right here. And then we have the link ID. So that's what we put in the message box here. I just put in a message box to show you what it is. Message box response. So that is the response that we get. So once we have that response, we can get rid of it now. I want to take that response and I want to parse it. So I want to get the short link. And that short link is basically the left position of the response. And we're going to look for, we're going to use in string of the response. And what I want to do is I want to look for this dash. Once that dash is found, I want to get only to the left of that. And I want to subtract one. Why are we subtracting one? Because I don't want to include the dash in that. I only want the link itself. That's going to get us our short link, our actual link. I'm just going to put it in a variable called short link. Next up, I want the link ID. In this case, we're going to use the right because I want basically the right. The right of what? I want the right, the last number of digits, but I want the right of, in this case, everything after the dash mark. So to get that, all we need to do is determine the entire length of the response and then subtract out the whatever is in up to that point, up to the point of the dash. And that's the only, we only want the right portion of that. That is going to extract the link ID. Those are the only information I need. Now I've got it. I've got everything I've got. I've got the long link, which is defined in a variable. I've got the short link and I've got the link ID. Now all I want to do is I want to put it in two different places. I want to put it inside this table here because this is on a per email basis. It's really easy. We can, once we clear out the email, we're going to clear this table out. This is only to be used inside the email. 
So then I also want to save it. This is temporary. It's going to be cleared out when we clear the email. Out. This is permanent because it's inside our database. So now we've just added this and now it's here. So now we have the three things, the long link, the short link and the link ID. So we're going to put that inside the table and we're going to put this inside the two emails. But all we need to do is find the first available column in each and then put it there. So that's just what we do for the remaining lines of code. The first thing is we want to add the link table details and that's based on sheet three, the link data. And so the first thing I want to do is get that first available row and put that into a variable called link table row. This line of code will do just that sheet three, a nine, nine and XL plus one plus one is going to get us the first available row. Then all I'm going to do is place the data in column a, the long link in column B, the short link and in column C, the link ID. Very, very simple. And then the same thing here, just on sheet one, we're focused. Of course, that's email sheet. We're going to focus on J column J. That's the one I want to get the first available. In this case, the first available 17. Once we put that into a variable, we're just going to put the long link and the short link in there. That's going to add the email details. That's it. That's all we have to do to get that short link. The macro takes care of the rest. Our in Integromat takes care of all the hard work. Just a simple macro. And that's going to automatically. Then all we need to do is put that link inside our email here and we're ready to go. Next up is the ability to add a file as a link. This is a really powerful feature. As explained earlier, when we have large files, we can't possibly attach them inside an email. So the best thing to do is create a link. And, and Dropbox does a pretty good job of this. If we have a, a Dropbox file, let's just say this is inside our Dropbox this is a link text you know we do know we can inside dropbox what you can do on a right click on this with dropbox is basically copy the dropbox link and then paste it in but i want to do that so that's basically what i'm going to be doing is again let me just show you that again any link that you have in dropbox dropbox is like a file sharing that you can do use anywhere and basically just like google drive or onedrive you can share it so with dropbox basically all we're going to be doing is just copy the dropbox link and then of course we're going to be pasting that in but basically what i want to do is i want to create that dropbox link automatically and i want to convert that into a short link it's a very long link if i paste that link down here you're going to see it's a very long link and i really don't not only do i not want this long link inside an email i want to track it if it's been clicked i want to know about it so i want to shorten it up and I want to track it. So I want to do all of that automatically. So how do we do that? And so to do that, let me show you how that works. So I'm going to turn it on first. I think it's turned off. We need to make sure that it is on. And we have this get shareable link. This is the one we're going to be going over. And I want to, if I refresh this, I believe it's turned off. So I want to turn it on. So anytime it's off, it's not going to work, right? So let's go ahead and make sure it's on. Clicking on down here, it's going to turn it on. It says I, I got to turn another one off. What, what I would do is I'd create multiple accounts. If you want to use the free, just create multiple accounts. Don't tell them I say that. Or, of course, you can pay for them. I'll include the link down below. So now what we have is get shareable links. So we've got that, only two of them. So that's the one I'm going to be using. That's the one I'm going to be going over with you. So, again, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a file to the file link. I'm going to click on this larger file here. Click OK. And it's going to create that automatically link. And it's going to place it right down here. And just like that, here's our short link that we have now. Here's our long link. And, of course, it's in the database. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at the macro that's been assigned to this add file as link. And we're going to go inside the macro here. And again, it is one more type of webhook. Again, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to first determine we need to open the application file dialog, right? We want the user to select some type of a file. We also want to make sure that that file is already in a Dropbox location, right? It really should be because Dropbox is the one that's going to be shared. So we need to ensure that it is in a Dropbox location and we want to put that Dropbox location somewhere. So I'm going to take my Dropbox file link and this is where my main Dropbox folder is. Now the file that you're sharing can be in any Dropbox folder and you know embedded as many folders as you want, but I want to basically map that Dropbox location because we need to make sure that it's inside that Dropbox. So that's going to be helpful to us. So once we have that, I want to browse for the file. So I want to select a Dropbox file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to allow multi-select. In this case, false. We only want them to select one file. And then I'm going to take that file, that long file name, and I'll put that in a variable called long link put it right here and I'm going to extract that so in this case what I'm going to do is I only want I want to determine basically the database location I want to remove the database location so what, what do I mean by that let's take our, our sample if this is our sample here I only want I want to extract this I don't want this part here because that part we are is already known what I want is this part here 
and I want the file name here. I want that. So everything after that. So basically, I want to just remove this portion from the link. We know that portion from from this here. So we know it. So I need to remove everything else. So I want to extract whatever is in K3. I want to delete from the link and keep everything else. So how do we do that? Well, we can use the replace function. We're going to replace that long links. We're take. What are we taking out? I want to take. I want to look for the database location, which is located in K3, and I want to replace it with nothing. So basically, we're just removing it in this case. We're taking it and replacing it with absolutely nothing. It's simply going to remove it. What's left for us is the file link and any folders associated that are already in Dropbox. That's important because that's what we need to place. Next up, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to set the object HTTP just as we have before. We're going to create a webhook. Now, again, let's walk through the steps of this one because that's the one that I've just created, and that's the one I want to show you. So so that's the one called get shareable short link this one's a little bit different again all I've done we'll walk through a little faster is I've created a brand new webhook and I've copied this webhook this is the same webhook that we now have inside our macro so once we've done that we've enabled that next thing what I do is I've chosen Dropbox so basically adding here or adding anywhere you can adding next so if I wanted to add another one I would just click here and of course you can select Dropbox if we were gonna actually be adding another one so that's all you have to do there so we're adding Dropbox now what are we doing on Dropbox I'm gonna choose the option that's called create or update a share link what does that look like well if I if I was gonna add a step here and I was gonna add a Dropbox we have a lot of different options so in this one the I want to so, do something called create or update a shared link that's the one you're looking for in all the Dropbox options create or update a share link okay so once we have that we get multiple options so you could also see it down here create or update a share link right down here that's the one we're using so when we click on it and what do we want we want to map a file or folder path we want to map a file and where do we want to map that we want to map that file we want to map the file coming from our shared link where do we get the file to share where's it coming from it's coming from our macro because it's coming from the end of our string a file to share and in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace in this case it's a little bit strange we anytime we use these web links or web hooks we want to make sure that the file association is changed that slash is back it's changed from a backslash to a forward slash backslash to a forward slash so in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this backslash to this forward slash okay that's what we want to replace notice that in our file path we have certain backslashes right what I want to do is I want to replace those and I want to change them to forward slashes so that's really important so we want to do that because why is that important because inside it only recognizes those notice the pattern here notice example it's got to be started with the backslash they're not asking for the Dropbox they're not asking the Dropbox is already assumed so, so notice that there's no Dropbox link here okay keep that in mind there's no link here so in that case all we want is the raw file and along with any embedded folders and of course changing those slashes just like it is here so here's our sample so that's what we'll, just what we have so the file is here so the file to share is going to come from our webhook that's all we need public we want to give it a public visibility we could do team or access with password if we want to we could give the link a specific expiration date very powerful our access level there's a lot of things we can do it so this way Dropbox is automatically going to convert that to a shareable link so what's the next thing we need to do now it's Rebandly so again if we are going to be adding a new step and we call it Rebandly we would be doing just this Rebrandly and now what do I need to do again what we're going to do is create a branded short link create a link that's the one you want that's the one I've chosen right here as well create a link so once we have that link again we're going to be doing very similar the main workspace here in this case what is the destination and the last time this time it's coming from Dropbox because Dropbox is already converting that to a shareable link so this time I'm looking for the download URL that's the link that's automatically shared now we have it so now we Brantley is going to do that it's going to take that long link and can turn it into a short link and that's it that's all we need to do so we've got all that information and we don't need any everything else is optional so basically all we're going to do is creating a link based on that long shareable Dropbox download URL so that's it so we hit OK and then again we're looking for a response just like we did last time inside that response I want to do two things again I want the short URL we have lots of options here of what to put in there but in this case I only want two I want the short URL I want a dash and then I want this 
branded short link ID. That's it. That's all I need. That's going to return it. So basically, our response is going to include those two information. So as we do, we send all the information and it's going to take that and get our response. It's going to put it into a variable. That response, again, is the link and is that ID. Again, all I need to do is then parse it into two variables, short link and link ID, add it to the table, and everything else is in the same as we did in the macro before. That's it. So adding a link to the details. Same thing we did before, but now notice we actually have that Dropbox short link. So now it comes from a file. Now you can share larger files from your computer in just a click. Fantastic. The last information that I want to share with you, other than the email, which we'll get to, is how to get that link data. So now we understand how we create short links, how we add file attachments, and how we add files as link and get them in here. Okay, but how do we get all take all those links and get the data? That's the next step I'm going to show you. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and activate that. Now I'm going to turn this one off. And I'm going to let's refresh these and make sure that our get link data is on. That's the only one I want on. I'm going to focus on that right now. Get link data. So how do we do that? That's very simple. We're just going to click this button. It's going to get all the data and bring it right back in. And that's it. 15 links imported and nine links have been updated. OK, so how do we do that? Well, again, that's very, very similar. We're going to also send a webhook, but slightly different in this case. In this case, we're going to start right off with setting the webhook and sending that webhook. This time, we're not sending any data. All I want to do is trigger something. And I'm going to trigger that by this webhook. So let's take a look inside that integer mat and see just how we did that. And that is called the get data. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it's going to open that up and we'll see this. And it's very, very simple. So if you want to edit it, we just click edit and that's going to let us show. So this time we've created a webhook and all this does is it's going to get the link data. We'll call it get link data. We can give it any name. Same thing. We copied this and pasted it into our code just like we did. Now we're going to go right to rebrandly. And this time we're going to we want something called list links. What is list links? Again, if we were to create a new one and we were to select Ribandly, we would then see this something called list links. So that's the one we're looking for. It returns all branded short links in a given workspace. And so that's its job. It returns all the information from links. So that's just what I want to do. So I want to bring that in. So here's the information. So we want our main workspace. We set a limit to 25. You can set limit to whatever you want to be based on the execution. So each cycle, we you can you can do filters like if you're filtering a domain or specific domain name. Really great. Lots of great filtering. Lots of great ability like filter by creator. So it's really really powerful. So once we have that, what do we want to do with it? I want to put it in Dropbox. What I really want to do is I want to put it in a text file like this. I want to bring it in here. How do we do that? So once it's in a text file, I want it read. So inside each text file, what I want to do is I want to give it a name. And that name, these are just duplicates from some tests. And that name, the name of the file is going to be the same thing as the ID. These were duplicates, so we don't want that. that. Inside that text file, what do I want? All I want to put is the number of links. In this case, it was zero. The number of clicks, that's it. So let's delete some of the sample data. So that's it. And that way we can get ready for some new data. Okay, so now that we've brought that, so now what I want to do is I want to put it into Dropbox. So once you've connected your Dropbox, and you'll get a pop-up, it'll just say connect to Dropbox. It'll give you an account. And now we say public. Now you're going to choose a folder. And I've created one in my link. It's going to, I've created a specific folder. That's this folder right here called link data. I want all my link data to go in here. So where do I want that data? Now I've got now I've got the folder, but what do I want to put? First, well, let's set a name. Again, I want to set a dynamic name. I'm going to use this, something unique. In this case, I'm going to use the branded short link ID, and that's going to come from Rebrandly, the branded short link ID that's located right here. Then I want to make sure to add txt onto it because I wanted a txt file. Whatever file type you want, you can do Word or whatever. We're going to use text file. Then what do I want inside? What about the data? All I want is the number of clicks. Very, very simple. The clicks is going to go here. So for each link you have, it's going to create a text file. That's it. Then it's going to automatically go inside Dropbox. Then I want a response. In this case, the response is not absolutely, but I'd like to know how many total links were brought in. How many total? That's because it's one option. And we can put that into a variable. So we're going to get a response. In this case, I want the total number of bundles. That's the total number of links or bundles of links that you have. And that comes from right here, total number of bundles. It's one of the options right here, total number of bundles. 
you can get a lot of different information here. There's so much you can you can extract. We're keeping it relatively simple. So I want that in the response. So that's just what we have inside the code. So inside the code, we're going to run all the information. We're going to get that response. That response is going to go into a variable. I want to set our link count to zero because I want to know not only do I want to know how many links came in, I want to know, let's say you've created 100 links, but you just started, you'll have more links, but maybe they're not all going to match up, right? They may not, all your links may not match up with data. Notice we only have nine links here, or nine link IDs. So basically, the idea is to extract that link ID and find that link ID here, determine what row it is, and then update the number of clicks. So that's the idea. So, but the point is, I want to know how many links were found inside Rebrandly, and then how many ones were met up. So I want two different numerical variables there and so we do just that so the first thing I want to do is the link table I want to get the last row of the link table row I want the last row so we're gonna use this variable because I need to find it what am I finding I need to find some information I also need the folder path where are these where are these data files going to be located and we're going to run this so we can get some data in here let's go ahead and run the macro we'll get some data in there and then we can work with some data so back into the emails click on the get link data all right and now you see all the data is in here now we've got some data to work with normally it's deleted I paused the code because I didn't want them deleted because in the future I do want them to delete it automatically but I wanted you to see the data so now we've got our data inside here so let's continue on with the macro now and see just how that works so once we have our link table we got a folder path then what I want to do is I got the last row I want the folder path that's located in K4 that's where our data is going to be located and I want the file name what is the file name it is the directory of the folder path and that means any file inside that folder that ends in txt so now we have that so now we have that so next up what I want to do while do while we're gonna do do while the length of the file name is greater than zero so basically what I want to do is I want to loop inside that folder for every single file that contains .txt I want to do something well, what do I want to do the first thing what I want to do is determine the file path the entire file path is basically going to be the folder path and the file name and then what I want to do is I want to open that I want to open that small txt file for input as number one and what that's going to do is line one I want to determine something called link clicks that's the long variable it's going to get our number of link clicks actually we're going to def we define that as a string in this case number of link clicks so that's number of link clicks then we're going to close our file so that's all we do for each file then what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the link ID the link ID is basically the entire file name right here's our here's our file name minus the, without the dot txt so all I need to do to get that link ID is do dot txt just remove that dot txt and we can do that again with the replace this time we're using the replace to remove the dot txt so we do that right here link ID is replace the file name by removing txt and replacing it with nothing now we've removed it so now what we can do is we can set the link ID range so now I've got the link ID now all I need to do is determine what row it is on so we're gonna use find to do that so I've got the first is C3 but what about the last C and the last in this case the last row is 11 so we've determined the last row of the table inside our object so we just have to do that we've done that right here the link table row that's gonna give us our last now what we're gonna do is run our range so in this case we're gonna set the link ID range this is a range that's been defined as a range here link range as a range so we want to make sure that we define and dimension it as a range so once we set that range we're gonna find we're looking for it again right here sheet set link ID range equal to sheet 3 c3 through c and the link table row this is the entire range where we're looking and what are we looking for we're looking for that link id then all we need to do is run basically determine if it's been found if not link id range is nothing this nothing and this not it's a double negative they cancel each other out so what this means is basically it has been found if it is found then do what then what I want to do is just determine the number of link clicks so in column D and the link range row wherever it's been found that row is that value is going to put that link clicks right here so the number of link clicks are going to go right in there and that link clicks is something we've extracted from that txt file so inside this column right here is the number of link clicks so, so all I need to do is place it right in there that's it so now that I've got that again 
all I need to do is just loop through those. So we've got that. I want to continue. I want to increment our link count so I know how many links actually made were updated. So we're going to create a count for that. On air, resume next. Then I want to kill, I want to remove that file path. I'm going to take that. I want to delete that. We no longer need this text file. So basically, I'm going to delete it. This will delete the text file right here. So now that we've deleted it, we can loop through that. Okay, so that's it. So that's it. Next up, I want the message response equals links imported, link count, links have been updated. That's it. So what does that look like? So let's go ahead and, and delete our text files, I should say. Once the text files are deleted, so we go back in here, click on emails, and now we just click get the, now this is the same if we right click click assign macro we see that this is the macro get link data that has been assigned so all we need to do is click on this button wait for a moment and we see 10 links imported six links have been updated okay fantastic i got to show you that now we've been over the, all the features of this let's get that email send email and i'll probably just do the clear email and then set that up sending email so now how do we send this email when i send this email the tricky part of this one is how do we get these from a single text in there we understand how to create an email. I'll go over a little quickly on this one, except the most important part was how to pull that up. Let's take a look at this email macros. I'm going to fill in this clear a little bit later before I send you. All that's going to do is just clear these fields out. It's going to be pretty simple. And I'll go ahead and take care of that before I send you. Don't forget to download this. If you like these applications, I've got over 150 of them for $56. That's an amazing deal. I don't know how long I'm going to have that deal open. So I'm including the link down below if you do like these templates that's a great way to help us out 150 templates that's just 37 cents per template let's get into the send email macro when i click this button i want to send the email how do i do that i want to do a few things again as a reminder i want to refresh and determine which customers are going to meet a specific criteria that's the criteria in this case it's new i want to make sure they're opt-in i want to return the results right here that i want to loop through the results in this case there's only one and then i want to create the emails and we want to either send the emails or display the emails based on a setting now the send them straight out without displaying or displaying first is an option that i created we're going to display first or send email let's go over the macro inside that in the email macro what we're going to do is we're going to dimension the outlook app as an object and the outlet mail is an object we need both of those i need the last customer row because we're running an advanced filter i need the last result row because we're going to run a loop through the results and i need to know the result row because we're going to keep track of what result row we're on i need the attachment number we're going to loop through all the attachments no matter how much they've created so we need to loop through those therefore we need a detachment as long and then also need the first name the last name of strings the message the subject of string the email to the attempt attachment string as a string and the attachment file as a string this one we're going to create an array from all right so we're going to set the first thing i want to do is i want to set the alloc application in late binding to create the alloc object that's the alloc application that's going to create that alloc application the next step we're going to focus primarily on sheets two that is our customers i'm going to determine the last customer row using end xl up then what I want to do is I want the attachment string. We know that's located in E6. That's the entire string. In this case, it's a lot of, you know, three different variables or however many files. They're all, remember, they're all separated by commas here. So notice there's a comma here, and then there is also a comma here. So we've got three files separated by a comma. What I need to do in VBA is to extract, determine those comments and extract the individual file names so we can use an array, and then we loop through the array to extract those individual strings within the large string so it's just what we do inside VBA so let me show you how we do that first thing is we're going to attach the attachment file we need to create that as an array and we're going to split that array split that string with an array and we're going to use the comma as the delimiter that's the comma let me get out of here and then so once we've got that once we've extracted that that's now in a delimited string here then we're ready to loop if the last customer row is three then exit the sub this should be here actually right after nothing else to do if there's no customers so just in case all right so next up we're ready to run our advanced filter if the advanced filter is starting in a2 through j that's going to run basically our advanced filter as i went over before running starting all the way in a2 here using the headers all the way to j and all the way down having our criteria set here being S2 through T3, and then of course having our results from V2 all the way through AD3. That's gonna get us our advanced filter. That's just what we do in the code right here. The advanced filter criteria S2 through T3, and then of course the results coming over into V2 through AD2. 
We want unique is true. We also need to, to make sure there is actually value that came, that there is results. So we're going to test the results. The last row is going to use column V. We're using the required field. In this case, first name, column V to get that last row. In this case, the last row is three. So we need to get that last row. If for some reason that last row is less than three, then of course I need to exit out of the sub or certainly not send in emails because there is no result. So we do just that in this line of code. If the last result row is less than three, then exit the sub. Next up, assuming that there is data, we're ready to run the loop for the result row equals three to the last result row. We want to determine the first name is in column V, the last name is in column W, the email to is in column AB. So basically just the first name, the last name, and the email. That's all I want to do is extract those into variables. So next up, what do we have? I want the email and the subject, right? The email is going to be AB in the result row. We got to get that email address. Next up, I want the next up I want the subject and the message but not only the subject i want to replace any instances of first name where they use the brackets as variables and i want to replace it with the actual first name the same thing with the last name if there's any instance of last name with the brackets i want to replace it with the actual last name that way we can personalize email sent to them next up we're going to set we're ready to create the email so with that email i'm going to create the email set outlook application this is actually going to create the email going to set the two is the email to the subject and the body is the message now we're ready for the attachments now the special part now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a loop for the attachment number this is our long L bound this is the original our first file inside our array we have an array that set up attached file our first one our first value our lower bound is always going to be zero so we're going to go from zero in this case to our last file. In this case, it's we have three files, so in this case, it would be two. So we'd go from zero to two. Why is it two? Because it starts at zero in arrays, and it goes to the last one. We have three items, so zero, one, and two. So in this case, we can also do one and two, but this is for variable because we don't know how many attachments we're gonna be adding in. So for each of those, then what we want to do is add attachments, add, attachments, add, and we're going to be adding, we're going to add the attachment, attachment number. Remember, zero, one, or two. This is going to determine the actual file name. So basically what we're doing here is we're signing in numbers. Let me show you what that would look like inside the actual text. So our first string here would be zero. Let's pull it up here. Our first string, which is located right here, this is number zero, right? Zero. This one is one here, right up until this point here. This is one. And then the remaining one is two. So we're going to extract zero, one, and two and pull those. So for each one of them, for each one of them, we're going to attach the file number, attach using attach. Next up, we're going to just go loop through. So that's it. Next up, sheet one. I want to check. What do I want to check? I want to check if this is display first, then I want to use dot display. I want to display that email. Otherwise, if it's if it's set to anything else or send email, I want it to send without displaying the email. So that's just what we do in here. If the code is if sheet one range g4 equals display first, then dot display, else dot send. That's it. That's all we do. We just loop through that through each customer. We do that. Then all we do is clean up our code with Outlook email equals nothing and Outlook app equals nothing. So that's it. So now when we click the send email, it's going to automatically create those email, automatically attach that information here, and it's going to do just that. It's going to send it. It's going to replace the first name with the actual first name, and it's going to send those links. So that's it. That's all we have to do. I'm really happy I showed you that. In this training, we saw four really amazing problems. We know how to search and add multiple attachments inside an email and send it to Outlook. We also know how to automatically create a short link just by clicking a button, entering a long name, and then automatically creating that short link and tracking that. We also know how to add a file link. So when we add a specific file, especially for a large file, especially, we can now change that into a link so that we can now email that link instead of having that to send large files, which is really difficult. And also, of course, we learn how to track and get that link data in. We know how to get that link data in, know how to, however many clicks are on that. So that not only do we get the links, but we know how many clicks each one has been clicked. But we also know how many times each link has been clicked. It's been a fantastic training. Thanks for bearing with me. Can't wait. If you do like this training, don't forget to hit the like button and comment below. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.